Christmas is very much a matter of tradition, and that's the inspiration behind today's old school feast, with a touch of the East. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without turkey on the table. And every year my kids challenge me to what they call the Christmas challenge. I have to come up with a brand new Christmas spread to go with that turkey and all the side dishes. This year I'm making an exotic spiced turkey to go with that roasted potatoes and veggies as well, stuffing and for dessert, Christmas cake. I'm opting out of the traditional fruit cake this year and I'm sure this is going to wow the kids. I'm starting out with a turkey and for that I've got a defrosted turkey here and I've patted it dry with absorbent paper towel. I've also trimmed the turkey already. First ingredient we need is butter. That goes into a hot pan, sizzles immediately. To this, add crushed ginger. Fresh ginger adds lots of flavor. I normally rub the butter under the turkey skin. This year, I'm going to soak the turkey in this buttery juice. To this, some clementine juice. You could also use orange juice if you like. To this, lemon juice and some lime. You need to heat this through. You don't need to boil it. And we don't want those citrus juices to evaporate. Mix that through. And now for the spices. This is called Ras Al Hanout, and it's a Moroccan spice blend. To this, we've got some cumin seeds, black pepper, a cinnamon stick, cardamom pods, and coriander seeds. These have been roasted, and I've ground them in a coffee grinder, and that's what they look like. It's really fragrant, quite aromatic as well. It's going to work well with that turkey. Drop that into the batter, and this is where the Christmas magic starts. Those aromas are coming through. Season the turkey with salt and black pepper. You don't need to rub this all over the turkey. Remember, it's going to be sitting in that juice and some black pepper. Remember, we've got black pepper in the spice mix, so just a touch. I've got a clementine here that goes into the cavity of the bird. Some garlic cloves as well, also going into the cavity. Fresh thyme, this is from my garden. Flavor. Pour that buttery juice over the turkey, into the cavity. It's really that simple. Using a spoon, just work that around. Leave the turkey to stand for about an hour, then start with the cake. This is not a traditional fruit cake, but I am sneaking some grated apple into this recipe. I've started out by creaming some butter and sugar until light and fluffy, and now add egg. Six eggs here, and with the egg, add a bit of self-raising flour. That's to prevent the mixture from curdling. It does take a while for the egg, butter and sugar to come together. Remember to keep the beater going. And if you're not certain about how long to cream this for, touch the mixture. It should feel like the sugar slightly dissolved. That's ready. Remove the whisk attachment. Got some self-raising flour here to this. Add some mixed spice, cinnamon, and vanilla powder. You could also use vanilla essence if you like. Some baking powder going in. Mix that around just to evenly distribute. Add half the flour to the butter. Use a spatula and fold that through. This is a really thick batter, and as I work the dry ingredients in, I can smell the cinnamon and the mixed spice. Add the remaining flour, scrape the bottom of the bowl, and make sure you work all the flour into the batter. To this, add some buttermilk and the apples. I've got two large grated apples here. I think I'm gonna need a spoon now. This is a rich buttery cake, almost like a Victoria sponge. And remember to serve it on the day it's made. I've got some greased and lined baking tins here. Divide the batter between the tins. Large tins first. And for the small tins, I'm doing a two-tiered cake for this. Use the spatula to level the batter. This goes into a preheated oven, 170 degrees Celsius. The larger cakes for about 30 minutes, the small ones for about 20. While the cakes are in the oven, let's start preparing the potatoes. And for that, sunflower oil into a pan. And then some cumin seeds. Once the cumin seeds are fragrant, sliced onion. 
saute this onion with some salt to this crushed garlic, some fresh thyme, spice it up with green chilli, stir that in, now add the potatoes. I've washed these, I've left the skins on and sliced them in half. Pour in the chicken stock. Move the potatoes around. We're going to leave this to simmer. The great thing about this recipe is all those flavours infuse and find their way into the potatoes. Let's check on those cakes, they should be ready. They are. The little cakes are ready. Be quite quick when you do this. You don't want the other cakes to flop. That's quite soft and spongy. Leave those to cool. Onto the stuffing. I pop the turkey onto a roasting pan. It's been resting for a while. I'm going to make the stuffing now. For that, I've got some sausage meat in a mixing bowl. To this, some chicken mince. You can play around with this recipe, make it nutty or fruity, spicy or not. I'm keeping it quite simple and I love a rice stuffing. Add some spring onion, fresh thyme, chives and coriander. A fair bit of garlic also going in. Use a wooden spoon to break down the lumps. Season this now but quite lightly. Remember, sausage meat is quite salty to this some black pepper as well. Mix that around. To this, add rice. I've got a cup and a half of cooked basmati rice here. And now melted butter. This is going to keep the stuffing quite moist. You can sneak a bit of chili into this. About two teaspoons. And mix well. Looks a little more interesting already. I like serving individual stuffing parcels and for that I've got some blanched cabbage leaves here. These are quite soft and I've sliced the vein off just to make them easier to roll. Place that onto the work surface and scoop some of the stuffing mixture into the center. Roll that up quite tightly. I'm baking it off in the same roasting pan as the turkey. Place the seam side down into the roasting pan. That looks really good. Pack them around the turkey. Stuffing is one of those dishes you can get really creative with. Pop that into the roasting pan. I've baked off the cakes already. The turkey is ready for the oven. Bake this off in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for an hour 30 minutes to about an hour 45. The potatoes have been simmering. The moisture is evaporating and you can see they start to break around the edges, which is exactly what we're looking for to that. Some cream, some butter going on top. Christmas is not the time to be dieting. To that, some green beans. Place that over. Some baby carrots as well. Pop those over. Season with salt touch of black pepper going on top, a little olive oil. Let's finish cooking them in the oven. To finish up on my slightly fruity Christmas cake, I've got some cream here. This is mascarpone, whooped with some butter and icing sugar. There's a touch of vanilla in here as well. Scoop some of that onto the apple cake. Use a spatula to smear that over. The next layer going on top, you can see this cake is really, really light and buttery. Remove the baking paper, and when you press down, you can feel how good that is. Use the spatula again. I'm not icing the sides of the cake. When there's a two-tier cake, it always feels like a special occasion. Little cake now going on top. This is the baby cake. Position that over. Cream going on top again. Spread that over, and then the next baby cake. I'm thinking, should I put some cream on the top or not? I think I'm just gonna dust that with icing sugar. Isn't that Christmassy? To finish up, I've got some raspberries here. You can just pop them 
around the cake. A little puff of color works so well with this cake. And I've got some candy canes here to decorate this cake. I've left the plastic on. They do melt when there's a bit of moisture. Pop those into the cake. Looks quite funky. Some red roses. I've dipped this in some gold dust. That should do it. Pop these in here. There we have it. To finish up, a light dusting of icing sugar. This looks so beautiful. That's my take on the Christmas cake. Time to plate up our feast. I'm sure my kids are going to be ecstatic with this feast. We've got the exotic turkey. I've roasted that with a blend of Moroccan spices. To go with that, stuffing wrapped in cabbage leaves and I've made that with sausage meat and chicken. It's charred beautifully on the outside and it's really juicy. I'm serving that with carrots, green beans, roasted potatoes. And for dessert, I've created a Christmas cake, light and fruity with apple, and it's garnished with raspberries, roses, and candy canes. Remember, if you're cooking over the festive season, cook with a full heart and lots of love. Happy Christmas.